Good morning. I've been back in my freezer and I found this pepper. You know I don't waste anything. So I already chopped up some green peppers. And I'm not even 100% sure what kind of pepper this was. I had so many growing in my garden last year. I believe it's just a jalapeno that turned red. Either way, we're going to bring the heat with this breakfast casserole. I know I've said it before, but, you know, freeze what you don't use in your peppers. Next, we're going to chop up just part of an onion. Just part. This breakfast casserole, by the way, I just had some again this morning, the day after I made this. Super good as leftovers. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to dice this up. Look at these awesome chef-like knife skills that I'm sporting here. Hey, if you want to learn new tricks and trades of the food biz, uh, why don't you consider subscribing to my channel? And then click that bell so you get all notifications of new videos made. I'm making them all the time. It's crazy. So anyway, we're going to dice this up. And once I'm done with that, look at this. Ah, uh, look at them knife skills in all different directions. And the good thing is I can just keep them all to here together. So... After that, we're not done yet because in my refrigerator, not wasting away, is part of a jalapeno. Booyah, there it is. And so I'm going to cut off just a few slices of this. Because if you remember, I already did a red one. And those are generally hotter than the green ones because they've been on the vine longer. So we're going to chop this baby up. And uh, again, with the knife skills, I'm showing you some really cool tricks. Not really. Anyway. That's all we're going to do with this. So, what is next on the horizon? I can tell you. I'm going to get my Jimmy Dick pot out. And we're going to spray it. And this time I'm using a butter-flavored non-stick spray. Look at that golden color. So yellow. So buttery. Now I have just plain old shredded frozen potato hash browns. You can see they're frozen as I have to break them up. So I'm going to put a single layer about half of the bag on the bottom of this casserole dish. Then we're going to season it up. Lowry's. Mm, these are plain potatoes, so they require quite a bit of seasoning. So I'm going to put Lowry's on there, seasoned salt, some pepper, and some salt. Just a little sprink. A little sprink do You can also use any type of seasoning that you have that you like. Next, we're going to add these French fried onions usually known for green bean casserole but they pack a lot of flavor in there and i'm not using exact measurements because there are none this is a casserole and it's whatever you like so if you don't like something in here make it up your own oh there's my favorite pot what's in here oh yeah sausage this is breakfast sausage it was still frozen so i put the lid on to help out i'm gonna dump in all of my cut up veg and because I added veg to this dish, it's now considered a health food. I mean, think about it. What's in this skillet right now? Protein and vegetables. Hmm? You can't get any better than that. So you can see I'm still clawing away at this frozen chunk of sausage. And that's quite all right. So I'm going to mix everything up, put the lid back on, and that's going to help steam. It's going to help soften up the veg and also cook up that sausage. So here I have six eggs. And to that, I'm adding a little bit of Lowry's, because hello, you need to season everything, don't you? And then I'm going to add one cup, oh, there's pepper, sorry, one cup of half and half. Why half and half? Because I had a cup of half and half, that's why. We don't waste. You can also use milk. So I'm just going to stir this up until it uh, becomes one golden color. And I know all of the egg yolks are broken. And everything is mixed well and cohesive. Because cohesive is what you want when you're scrambling up your eggs. And again, more protein. Let's go back to the skillet. Booyah, look at this. That lid on there really defrosted the rest of that sausage. So now I'm just going to chop it all up. Make sure it's all fine. Stir it around. You know, like you normally do when you're cooking stuff in a skillet. And while I'm doing this, let me tell you about my website. It's jimmydicks.com. Please go there and check it out and subscribe. We're going to be handing out newsletters, all that good stuff. And there's a ton of stuff on there as well. So, it's been a few more minutes now. You can see almost all the pink is gone. 
So, I think we're getting close. And because the skillet I'm using is cast iron, I can turn the heat off anytime I want now. But what I'm going to do here is a little restaurant trick. I'm going to press against the wall here to get rid of all that fat. You see the fat seeping out? So I'm, I'm just putting it all on one side. And then I'm going to tilt it forward a little bit here and let it run down. Gross. So I've got yelled at and chastised on before about using paper towels, but chefs do it in restaurants all the time. Paper towels are sanitary. It's not like I picked it out of the trash. Anyway, use that to sop up a lot of the fat because, again, you know I'm cooking a health food breakfast here. So you can see easy disposal. I'm not dirtying up a colander trying to drain everything out. And check it out. With that white bottom skillet, you can see there's not much oil left behind. Healthy. Hashtag healthy. So next, we are going to go to the freezer and pull out some green chilies. These are green chilies that are grown locally that we get every year. We get a bushel or two and then we just freeze them. They roast them for you right there where you buy them. And then we freeze them in bunches. And then we pull them out, defrost them, peel them, and then dice them up. So... I'm just dicing these up. You can also use a can of diced chilies, especially if they don't grow them where you live. Diced chilies work just fine. But I found green chilies add that little extra something that makes it Southwest. So good. And if you're buying them in a can, I recommend Hatch. That is the chili capital of the world. Hatch, New Mexico. So I'm gonna sprinkle these all over the top of those onions and potatoes. And we're only doing one layer. because That's really all you need. So we're going to sprinkle these evenly throughout. One of these years, I'm going to go to Hatch, New Mexico for the greatest chili festival on the planet. That's one of my goals. If I do, I'll make a video of it and show you. Now, on top of that, we're going to do our meat and veg. I'm just going to sprinkle exactly half. You can use a scale, but luckily my glasses are calibrated for weight. So there is no scale needed. Doesn't that look good already? And just think, this is only the first layer. All I can say is, my mouth is watering. So, what do we do next? We add cheese. Cheese, glorious cheese. I'm using a Cheddar Jack blend, but you can use any kind of cheese you want. Again, that's why there's no recipe. Use as much or as little, but here's a secret. Cream cheese. This is four ounces or a half a brick of cream cheese. And all I'm doing is tearing off pieces with my flesh mitts and just putting them around so it's evenly distributed somewhat. If you're not, if you're not cooking with cream cheese already, I'm here to tell you, cream cheese and breakfast go hand in hand. If you've never had cream cheese in an omelet, so good. All you do, put your eggs in the skillet. Maybe some chives, throw some green cheese in there, some cream cheese, not green cheese, silly. Anyway, it melts up super nice and it just tastes so good. If you haven't done it, you need to try. So here comes layer two. This one's going to be a lot faster. So we're going to use the rest of that bag and we're going to cover everything up. So that's all of the potatoes. And again, what's next? Seasoning. Lowry, salt and pepper, French onions, because we're repeating the layers, aren't we? Yes, we are. And then the meat, the rest of the meat. And after that, I'm going to pick up my egg mixture and we're going to pour it all around evenly. I say evenly, but you know, you just pour it around all over so it has a chance to sink down to the bottom of it. Luckily for us, there's not like a solid layer preventing this from sinking to the bottom. So you just want to make sure that you still help it out by pouring it all around. Next, I'm going to get a fork and I'm going to dig around. What I like to dig around for is just to help ensure that all that egg mixture is getting to the bottom, but also to verify it to see if I have enough liquid in there. And I don't. So I beat up two more eggs and some milk because I'm not a half and half. And I sprinkled that on there. That's the thing. With casseroles, there's no mistakes. Just learning. So now it looks 
perfect. I have enough liquid so there won't be any dry spots. Everything's going to cook up nice. I'm looking forward to it. So now we just have one more thing to do. Top it with cheese. Yum. Sit it. Now I'm going to cover it in foil. And I'm going to stick it in a 350 degree oven for 40 minutes. And that's just for beginning. So now it's been 40 minutes. I am going to walk up to this oven, pull it out a little bit, and remove that foil top. The reason it was foiled anyway was to help create um, just quicker cooking time on the inside. So I'm going to go another 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, I pull it out and I look at it. I don't like what I see. Check it out. Jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. Nope, it's not set up. So we're going to put it in for 15 or 20 minutes more. The cooking times vary. Every oven is different. So however long it takes to get solid and set is how long it takes to cook. Hmm. That's why I'm not writing a recipe for this. Anyway, it looks awesome now. I stuck a knife in it. Knife don't lie. It comes out clean. Let's plate this baby up. Booyah! That looks so good. And trust me when I say it is. Hey, thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up. Yeah.